Okay, so um, you can make loose adjustments using curves, but another way to make very loose adjustments is by using a combination of different selection techniques. Um, you can use curves and you can use quick mask or you can simply use the quick mask uh, adjustment. To activate the quick mask, you hit this button here. You can tell that it's on because it's, it went ahead and switched to a red mode. I'm going to switch to black in my foreground color and increase my paint opacity and go ahead and use my right bracket key to get a nice big brush. And I can go ahead and actually paint the areas that I want to select. Um, and you can paint all this in. You can also use other paint tools like the paint bucket to finish off the selection and the quick mask is kind of smart. You'll feel it kind of grabbing the edges. Okay, and so this red ruby lith um, solid area is what you want to see. Make sure when you paint you're at 100%. Then you simply, when you're done painting your selection, you hit the quick mask area again and it loads it as a selection. And you can go ahead then and you have your selection. Now we can make our adjustment in the uh, adjustments palette. Um, we're going to go ahead and add a curve. Get a nice dramatic sky. And then we're going to go ahead and adjust our mask, feather it out so that it's smooth. And then obviously the silhouette kind of look may not be what you had in mind. You might want to go back into the mask, make sure that it's got the double selection around it. And what color are we going to use to bring back the detail? We're going to use black, exactly, which is already loaded. And you might choose to do a nice um, tight selection using the pen tool, or you can go in and hand paint over the top to bring back in the detail. Okay, spend some time doing that. And uh, sometimes I find that lowering the opacity when you get to the edges of the figures helps gives it, give it a more natural transition. And um, that's one way to quickly select an area and make an adjustment. So you're going to want to make as many uh, curves as necessary to select, to selectively control the various tonalities of your image. Um, after you do that, you can leave it as black and white, or you can apply some other color adjustments. Um, and there are a few techniques. The first one that I'm going to show you is the fill layer with a solid color technique. Okay, so you can apply a, col a solid color. Um, this one I'm going to make sepia. And I'm going to say, okay, the blending mode is optional. There are a couple different blending modes that work well. The multiply mode, the overlay mode, and the color mode. I'm going to go with the color blending mode. And then you, uh, the solid color option comes up and you can choose with the color picker and preview on your image the type of color that you might like. This is kind of a strong color. I would say it's a little too strong, but watch what happens when I say, okay, I'm in the color blending mode. How can I reduce the strength of this layer? By using the opacity slider, exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down the opacity slider just like that. And that's a really simple way to make a monochromatic sepia. You may need to go back and make some adjustments to your um, curves based on what your color perception has done to the tonalities. And we can go ahead and do that by double clicking on our curve layer. Okay. Um, so that's one way to add a very solid color. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and show you another technique to add um, two colors. We're going to choose layer, new fill layer, but this time we're going to choose a gradient. So if we want to go ahead and do um, a gradient fill, I'm going to go ahead and choose the color blend mode again. It's going to ask me which colors I want. Um, and you can choose the foreground back color that, background color that you already have loaded, um, or you can choose to uh, load gradients that you might have saved. 
um, or you can choose to uh, a new gradient. Um, that actually saves the one that we're on now. So there is a way to go in and change the color of the gradient, and I've kind of forgotten how to do that while we're in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just say OK and back out. And what you can do is choose the colors as your foreground background colors before you do the gradient. Um, make sure that you're on a colorful layer so that it shows you your color options. Because I had the other layer selected, it wasn't showing my color options. So here I have a blue and a sepia. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my gradient. And you can see that it comes up as the first option here. Um, and I forgot to choose the blend mode because I went kind of fast, but I can modify that here and then reduce the color down a little bit. You can double click and um, if you right click on the gradient, I went ahead and right clicked, you can actually change how quickly uh, where the actual gradation occurs, which is kind of interesting, and say OK. And then you can also use the move tool and move the gradient up and down. Is it moving? It is moving. You can see it happen in the sky right there. So those are a few options when adding color to your image. Um, if I wanted to, let's say on the sepia image, not make the sepia so strong in the sky, what could I do? Mask it out, right? One thing that you can do, you can use the traditional brush method to mask it out, or I like to use the gradient tool. Make sure you have black and white selected. Activate the mask. Black and white selected. Make sure you have the traditional black and white selected from the top here. And I can go ahead and draw in a mask if I want to do a subtle transition. Or I can take it up further if I want just a little bit of tone. So the gradient is a really helpful tool when colorizing an image. Um, and just make sure that you're in the color blend mode or you can try some of these other blend modes like multiply, overlay, and soft light. They all give slightly different looks and feels.